Hello, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm gonna be talking about my vintage journey, I guess. I don't know what it is, I kind of hate the phrase journey, but like, I'm gonna go with it because I don't really know how else to explain it. So I'm gonna be telling you what got me interested in vintage style and antiques, and how it progressed, how I figured out exactly what my style was, and all that stuff. So let's just get right into it. So it actually kind of starts when I was about five years old. At this time, I had my first move from one house to another. My family moved to a really old cabin in the middle of the woods. I believe it was about a hundred years old. So my mom was homeschooling me and my older brother. The way she did it was very vintage inspired, I guess. It was very much an Edwardian sort of schooling method. We spent a lot of time outside. We would go and learn to identify different plants and stuff, and we'd go outside and sit and draw whatever we saw. We had this book, I think it's called The Diary of an Edwardian Lady, and it's a, I think it's a journal that was written by a lady in the Edwardian era, and then it was published, like, a bunch of years later. She used that book to sort of help teach us poetry and different writing methods. I was also raised on vintage cartoons. I didn't even know that they were old cartoons, but I watched, like, a bunch of Mickey Mouse cartoons that were from, like, the 40s, and I didn't even know it. I thought these were cartoons that, like, everybody watched, I thought that they were like brand new cartoons. So that's sort of where I guess the vintage began in me, is I was sort of raised vintage. I lived in a 100 year old cabin in the woods and we got like everything from the thrift store and we had like a bunch of antiques. So with that set of the stage, I think it was kind of always in the cards for me to be a vintagey girl. So skipping ahead a little bit to when I was nine years old, we moved away from that house. When we first moved to this neighborhood, I kind of had lost touch a little bit with that vintagey style. Now it's important to note here that I was a hardcore ballet girl. I did ballet class and like jazz class, a bunch of different dances, for a really long time. Like I wanted to be like either a professional dancer or a ballet teacher. I was really, really into it. So with that on top of the kind of being in just like a normal modern town at that point, we had less of that like vintagey house vibe going on around us, didn't live in a forest anymore. With dance on top of that, it's really hard to really have any sort of vintage influence in what you're wearing. So I was basically always just wearing like leggings and like a t-shirt with my ballet uniform underneath and all that stuff. It was not a very fashion-y time in my existence. So then skipping ahead to when I was around like 12, 13-ish, I think it was maybe in 2017, I discovered an antique store in our neighborhood. This is the antique store Everything Old, and you may have seen me mention them on my Instagram or tag them on my Instagram. They're like my favorite store ever. So that sort of started getting me into that like vintagey mood a little more because they had such a cool selection and I just couldn't help but be interested in everything that they had. So that definitely put a seed in my brain of history and vintageiness. Around this time, my great aunt sent me an envelope that had two vintage postcards in it. She is sort of that member of the family that has like all the family heirlooms and the antiques and stuff. So she sent me these two postcards. One is from 1916, one I think is from like the 1900s-ish. That's what started me on my love of vintage postcards, which you can see some of them here. I was organizing them, so a couple of them are taken down at the moment. As I was getting more interested in vintage postcards, I just got more interested in antiques in general. I started buying postcards and I really enjoyed looking at the beautiful fashions that were on the postcards. I tend to like glamour postcards, so like 
pictures of ladies wearing, like, interesting fashions of different eras. So sometime around 2017, I was at the thrift store. I've always been a thrift store person, no matter what fashion-y place I'm in. I love the thrift store. One day, I saw this skirt, this purple plaid schoolgirl skirt, and I thought it was really cool, and it didn't really make sense with exactly what I tended to wear, but something was really drawing me towards it, so after seeing it in the thrift store multiple times after I went in there, like day after day after day, I kept wanting to get it. So eventually I just bought it, and it became like my favorite skirt ever. This is also around the time that I started um, getting a lot better at sewing and stuff, so I was able to alter the skirt myself to make it fit me properly. Here is said skirt. It's like a very dark, like, indigo kind of color. Once I realized how much I loved this skirt, I started thinking to myself, why is it that I like this so much? And what, how can I find other things that are sort of like this style? Now, because I loved antiques and I loved postcards, I'd seen lots of different pictures of what people wore in different eras. So I kind of concluded, I was like, this is a very like 1940s kind of deal. Maybe that's my thing. So that's when I started really looking into it. This is also the time I started finding other vintage YouTubers like Rachel Maxey and Carolina Zabrowska and Bernadette Banner and all those people, vintage and historical YouTubers. I also started realizing that even if I did sort of like put together a pretty vintage looking outfit, it just didn't quite look right. And so I sort of started to learn that the hair and the makeup does a lot for making it look authentic. So I started learning hairstyles and experimenting with a red lip. So I would wear the vintage skirts a lot because I really liked the silhouette, but I was still kind of uncomfortable doing the whole thing. So it was only really on weekends that I actually would sometimes experiment with the hair and when I would wear red lipstick and stuff. At this point, I was still around like 12, 13-ish. I think probably about 13. I still had it in my head that I wanted to be a ballet teacher. But then I started getting like really tired and just like weak and wasn't enjoying dance anymore and this is around the time, it was like early 2018, that I discovered that I had autoimmune thyroid disease. This basically makes it so that my body attacks my thyroid, which is like an organ right around here that produces a bunch of your hormones. So we didn't really know about this, but I was just like way too tired and I wasn't enjoying dance anymore, so I quit. And for many reasons, that is probably the best decision I ever made. First of all, because then I just like had more time in general, I was able to learn more about history and antiques and all that stuff, but very importantly, I now had time to dress in vintage styles, because I no longer had to be wearing my dance uniform underneath my clothes, so that gave me a lot more freedom. I was able to do what I wanted to my hair and wear exactly what I wanted to. This was in 2018. That same year, after the summer, I started doing public schooling. I was in grade 10, and I thought that I, it might sort of slow me down in my sort of experimental, bold style if I was to start going to a public school. I thought I would feel a little more weird and self-conscious about what I was wearing, but it turns out that however this happened, going to school made me more confident to wear exactly what I wanted to wear. The school I went to is very interesting. There's a lot of people that dress in very interesting styles. It's a very open and wel welcoming kind of school, so I started occasionally actually wearing the vintage hair to school and doing like the whole thing and I remember I was in like a woodworking class once and I was wearing like army green with like an RCAF pin and the vintage hair and I was like all World War II inspired and some kid said to me he was like hey how's the war going and that sort of 
I don't know, that might make some people self-conscious, but like I... I don't know, I thought that was funny, I didn't have any problem with it, and I haven't really had negative experiences with dressing the way I dress. Especially at that school, because it was so nice and welcoming, it made me be able to sort of walk with more confidence in what I was wearing instead of being like, oh, do I look weird, like I don't know what's happening. So I started wearing vintage relatively often, but sometimes it was really hard because, you know, you just have to like, you have to wake up kind of early for school and don't really have time to do all of the hair and everything. So it wasn't quite the same wearing the vintagey outfit without the vintagey hair, so I still did wear a lot of modern styles. In 2019, I started sewing a lot more of my vintagey clothes. I went pretty hardcore vintage, especially in the summer. And in the summer, I cut my hair short for the first time in, like, a long time. This was, like, purely because of vintage I wanted to be able to do the curls and have it be nice and easy. So 2019 is really when I started, like, getting into it a lot. And at that point, way more of my clothes were made by me. And then a very wonderful milestone it's actually quite recently, the very beginning of 2020, I went through all of the clothes in my closet and got rid of almost all of my modern clothes. And also, starting this year, I switched to online schooling again so that I could try and graduate faster and move on to my career, which I would like to be a historian a sort of historian, working in an antique shop. I sort of figured out that I wanted to be a historian pretty quickly into the sort of vintage fashion days, probably somewhere around 2018. I pretty solidly decided. So now, because I have very few modern clothes, I basically only wear vintage styles. Most of my clothes are not actually vintage. I have like a couple things that are, like, authentic. Yeah, that's, um, basically where we are now. To talk a little bit about how I feel about vintage fashion now, I think that there's probably a lot of people out there that really like fashion from different decades, especially, like, some of the earlier decades, but they feel too afraid to just go and do it because you're afraid of the stairs, and it seems weird. You don't want to like, get those looks and you don't want people telling you you look weird. But, honestly, I must tell you, this is very important, I have, I don't believe I've ever had any negative encounters with the way I dress and the way I look. I have probably had a few people maybe, like, look at me a little funny, but, like, I haven't really noticed that much. And when people are, I feel like it's usually just sort of curiosity. I don't think that many people think that it looks bad or think that it's super duper like crazy or weird. They're just like, oh, that's interesting. I wouldn't have thought to do that. And I get a shocking amount of comments. So many people love seeing what I'm wearing. And I had a guy in a grocery store once just turn to me and say, you dress from another century. And that made my day. Honestly, if you want to dress like the, you live from the 1920s, then just like try it out. And I know it's way easier said than done to just go out and wear something totally out of the norm, but it's very worth it, it's very enjoyable, and I'm very happy with where my fashion is now. I hope to eventually have more vintagey clothes and actually authentic vintage clothes. And I guess to finish this off, I sort of have a question for you, because I have a bit of a dilemma right now, is my hair. Because I love having long hair. It's very fun. I would love to have hair that's like down at my waist, because I also love that sort of elvish look. That's kind of my alternative if I am not doing vintage on some rare occasions, but at this point it's becoming so long that it's getting really hard to curl and have like the set work really well. The curls get weighed down more. We're in quarantine right now, so 
if I'm gonna do this and cut my hair short, then I need to do it myself. <laughs> so, vote if you would like me to cut my hair short. If you think I should cut it short again, if I should let it keep getting longer, I would love to hear your opinions. So that is my vintage story, how I discovered vintage, and I guess where my style is now. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you next time. Bye! I'm telling you, every time I film, someone decides to use the blender. I don't know how this keeps happening. Someone used the blender, like, half an hour ago, and I thought that they were done, but, um, I guess not. <laughs>